Well, it's been over a year now since Windows 7 went out of, finally went out of its extended support. I think it was January 14th last year, I think. Give me a... Windows 7 end of support is sometime around there. Yeah, Windows 7 is, uh, this is, it's been a year since Windows 7 has gone out of support and extended support ended on Jan January 14th, 2020, as you can see right there. So yeah, how is, how is Windows 7 holding up over a year after, over a year after its extended support ended? Now, in terms of perform, of application support and performance Windows 7 has been absolutely fine for me I've used I've used Windows 7 as my daily driver I brief yeah I, I used I used when I used Windows 10 for like a year and then reverted revert, reverted back to Windows 7 in like April of 2017 but yes more or less since then I've used Windows 7 as my daily OS so I've used it a lot, and to be honest, and yeah, there, there's, there's, n for me, there has been no difference between using Windows 7. There's been essentially no difference in using Windows 7 then and using Windows 7 now. I mean, the performance has been the same. There's no compatibility issues of that, of any of that sort, with the applications I've, I use, which are admittedly rather limited in scope because, well, I, I play Minecraft, I browse things, I. Listen to music on MIDI, me, media player with Windows Media Player, and I use LibreOffice. Play Steam games, and those those app sorts of applications generally hold their support for a while. But still, I don't think it's. But yeah, it's I th the kind of on a, a compatibility and performance side of things. Windows Seven has been absolutely fine for me. Although. However, of course, with Windows 7, actually, uh, in regards to application support, it's, I don't, I think that it's, I think, I think, I think that a lot of applications are going to support Windows 7 for a very long time, and the reason for this is that Windows 7, like, comparing Windows, Windows 7 is far, is considerably less far removed from modern up from like you know, from modern tech than say Windows XP was and I think on those grounds it's just like architecturally Windows 7 is is good consider considerably more is quite similar to Windows to Windows 10 like they even share the same control panel you know, I think you I think you can still use the could the Windows 7 control option and Windows 10. Yeah, for that reason, I think it'll be less difficult to maintain application support for Windows 7 unless, unless there's, like, some big shift to Microsoft Store applications over... <sighs> Screw off, Java. Unless there's some big shift from, um, dot, like, loads of formerly .exe applications simply switching to the Microsoft Store, which, to be honest, I think is highly unlikely. See, on, the, on, the, on the kind of the grounds of the, like the similarity of the OS's, OS's themselves, I think that Windows 7 application support is going to be is going to last a lot longer than the sub support for Windows XP did. Now, the most significant part of support, or actually, essentially what support is, is something that has to do with security. It's when Microsoft ceasing to provide security updates for Windows 7. Now, I've I've not had like any big bad viruses, kind of like loads of pop-ups and unwanted applications and God knows what being chucked into your browser. But viruses do, nowadays tend not to work like that. They tend to be far more subtle. And what this means is that Windows I Windows is that Windows Seven is a more insecure operating system than Windows Ten or Windows Eight Point One. I mean that's that's trivial, but this is even more so now that support has ended. And what this means is that you have 
that you have to do some what I think are common sense things just to make sure that your PC doesn't get filled up with this, with all sorts of unwanted crap and that is things like making sure you use relatively up-to-date software which I'm not pristine on using say using kind of like up-to-date mainstream browsers like Firefox for example which supports Windows X Windows not Windows XP Windows 7 currently and probably will do for several years from now and making sure that you're say a bit more careful when say typing the names of websites into your search or clicking links just because you need to make extra sure that you're not um, not unintentionally letting in any malicious software Now, as far as antiviruses go, I'm not too knowledgeable about Windows 7 antivirus support at the moment. I'd imagine that, it, that almost every anti major antivirus supports Windows 7 at the moment. I use Malwarebytes, and Malwarebytes definitely does at the moment. And it's, what's also notable is that Malwarebytes has, I think, made a pledge to support Windows XP indefinitely, basically until they... Yeah, basically, just like support Windows XP indefinitely. And I don't know, <coughs> I don't know to what extent they've held up that promise. But I, like, when I was using, when I had Windows XP on a laptop several months ago that I was just toying around with, Malwarebytes definitely worked fine then. So, I would imagine that it still works fine now, but this is not about Windows XP, this is about Windows 7. What the implication of that is, is that. Malwarebytes is likely to support Windows 7 for a very long time. Now there are some other measures that you can take if you want to if you want to if you want to stay safe from all all, all the big bad threats that live on the internet, such as you know doing thing with, doing things which some tech savvy people which most tech savvy people already do uh, using an ad blocker like you. Uh, my uh, uBlock origin, or going a step further and using NoScript or something of that sort, and yeah, just doing kind of those sorts of little things as a way of safeguarding yourself against potential online threats. Now, if if you're safe in that category, like if you do those sorts of, if you do kind of like those uh, sorts of extra things to kind of like keep keep your overall system security up to notch. And you aren't doing it is something like special, something super specialized, such as, such as playing actually all well, playing a DX12 game would would classify as specialized here, since it doesn't support Windows. It obviously doesn't support Windows 7, but you wouldn't be using Windows 7 anyway if you were playing those sorts of games. So that isn't all that relevant of a point, but. If you're doing something specialized, or if you're using really new hardware, I th think yes, I think it is still I think it is still the case that uh, that Ryzen Ryzen CPUs and newer Intel in newer Intel processors past seventh generation I think um, have compatibility broken in them by Microsoft simply because Microsoft wants people to move to Windows 10, which is scummy, but understandable as they're they're they want people to be on the latest version of their software which is what any company would want so if you're doing what I do with Windows 7 which is essentially let's say browse the internet watch YouTube read read Wikipedia maybe play some flash games every now and then or do some other sort of light gaming I primarily play Minecraft but and, and sometimes Civilization 5, but other people have their preferences. If you're doing it for kind of like light usage of that sort, then Windows, then I think Windows Windows 7 at the moment currently holds up very well. Granted that you take kind of like all the sorts of precautions that I mentioned, that I mentioned before. So yeah, if you're doing that sort of thing, Windows, in my opinion, Windows 7 is 
absolutely, absolutely fine for you. Absolutely fine, unless you have a specific, unless you have like a specific need for security on top of that. But then again, those. But then again, people who are specifically security and spyware conscious are likely to be using Linux anyway. So now, I mean, if you're now at the moment, other than I don't, there isn't. Well, let me let me see how to phrase this. There isn't anything wrong with Windows 8. There isn't anything wrong with Win, or actually, there isn't much wrong with Windows 7 at the moment. But at the same time, like, there's not much reason not to use, say, Windows 8.1 if you have a key for it, because of, unless you have some specific, unless you have the, unless say you find using third-party UI is a problem. Like, if you're really averse to Microsoft spyware, which I think, I think a lot of people are. Windows 8.1 is fine in that regard, if you grant, granted if you remove certain updates which seem to backport some of Windows 10's telemetry to Windows 7 and Windows 8.1, and of course Linux is, all, is, Linux is also fine in this re regard, although some people may have trouble using it. Like, at the moment, like I, do, I don't see any reason to proactively choose, I don't see much reason to proactively choose Windows 7 over other operating systems unless it's like a special per personal preference of yours, but if you are using Windows 7 currently, staying with it is probably going to be fine for a while, and for, for the first year since extended support ended, using using Windows 7 has been, has been fine, has been absolutely fine for me. So yeah, there we go. We shall wait and see if it keep if it stays being if it keeps working well. <laughs> so yeah.